Hey guys, today we're gonna to do some defensive turtle stuff. No matter what level that you're at in Jiu-Jitsu, you're gonna be forced to play defense at certain times. And if you're confident in your defense, you're gonna take more risks on offense. I know for me, I'm willing to ta attack anything 100% because I'm confident in my defense that I can escape at any position or any type of pin situation. But I'm sure you've all experienced before a less experienced person going sit for say an arm lock for, from guard or some type of attack and it fails, they get their guard pass, and that's kind of the beginning of the end. When you're on defense, it's really important to stay relaxed. You don't want to be tense and under a lot of pressure, you're going to get tired a lot faster. And finally, the last thing I'll say about turtle before we show some moves is that most guard players, the longer that you train, most people will really pride themselves on their guard. They don't want to get past. It's it's almost like a sin for, for someone to pin me down into side control. I'd rather go to turtle so if you get better at the turtle position, you'll find you, you, you're going to get your guard pass a lot less. Don't be afraid to expose your back as long as you have a couple moves in your arsenal that you know you're going to be able to get back to a safe position and maybe even a dominant position. So let's take a look. Okay guys, here's some solo drills you can do on your own. You can even do these at home. You can do it as a little bit of a warm up before class but this is gonna get you used to moving your body, getting in and out of the turtle position, and just how you're gonna move, move yourself around. So, one of my favorite ones that I like to start out with, and that I will sometimes use as a warm up for myself, is just rolling over my sh shoulder to the turtle position, like so. I'll throw my feet back, look over the shoulder that I'm rolling over, and roll to my knees here. Doesn't look like much, but in Jiu Jitsu, you'll often find yourself in these kind of weird positions where you're turned upside down, you have to roll over. This is gonna be one you wanna be really comfortable with. So as I come back, I put my shoulder to the floor, I look between my legs and I throw my body forward. I'll go over the other shoulder, looking over the shoulder that I'm rolling over. I'm never rolling over my neck. You don't wanna hurt your neck here. I don't go like this, okay? I'm looking over either in between my legs or to the outside of my knee as my shoulder touches the floor here. So I'm just quickly and easily getting in and out of the turtle position here, like so. Just kind of gets your body moving a little bit, gives you some coordination, some agility, and it's fairly easy to do. On top of that, you can do side to side shoulder rolls, which where we're sitting on our butt like so. I'm gonna tuck an arm behind my own back and I'm gonna lean my chest forward as I start to fall to my side. My left leg steps over and I end up like so. So you'll often see people doing these at the start of class to kind of warm up on their own. So again, a big problem that I see, especially more inexperienced students, they won't lean forward with this drill they'll be more sitting back. So it'll look something like this, where they land and they get kind of all tied up where they're trying to step over. Think about it like you're trying to bring your, your head towards your feet here. Now I tuck my hand behind my back. I'm almost kind of folded in half, but that means I have less surface area on the mat. So my shoulder, my arms touching the mat, my shoulders touching the mat, none of my back or my legs and my hips are on the floor now. It's a lot less surface area, which allows me to roll across my shoulders. So as you get better and better at this, you wanna be able to do it like so, where you're pretty comfortable. You can hear me talking fairly naturally. This isn't using a lot of energy because I'm efficient with this. I've done it for years. And as you do it more and more, like I said, that could be one that you can do when you're watching TV. Honestly, a story that I can share with you as I was thinking and planning this turtle video, a lot of times I was moving stuff out of the way in my living room and just on the rug in my living room, I was messing around with rolling around, pretending that I'm in turtle. So it's something that you can do at home. And visual, vis, visualization is a big thing in jiu-jitsu. If you pretend almost like it's real, pretend, try to be as detailed as possible, it's almost like you're rolling with someone, not the exact same thing, but it's good practice all the same. So other solo drills we can do, is the Granby roll, which will be shown in this video, but the Granby roll is when I'm on my knees and I'm gonna roll across my shoulder blades, where I tuck an arm between my legs 
This is a little bit more of an unnatural version. But I tuck my arm between my legs and I roll across my shoulder blades. Almost like I'm doing a little half circle here. So my arm goes between my legs here. I'm almost drawing a circle with my toes as I roll across my shoulder blades. Now this will be useful when we're being attacked from turtle and we're looking to throw our legs back at our opponent and try to end up in a guard position. But just as a solo drill, we can do a Grammy roll where we tuck our arm and we roll across our shoulder blades like so. Here, I don't wanna necessarily just fall right to my back. I'm trying to stay nice and tight here. I should just be ending up in a 180 of where I am now. That's how you know that you did it correctly. Is if I'm looking at the wall, I'm 180, and now I'm like so. So this is our Granby roll, where we're practicing rolling across our shoulder blades. Another one that you can add is when you're in turtle, you're often be trying to move out and away from your opponent. So a lot of times I might just be like so, practicing my turtle, and I'll start to just get used to kind of moving on my knees away from my partner, pretending that he's hip to hip, because that means I can get away from him and potentially sit back together. So these are movement drills that will require a lot of flexibility or agility or things like that. But those are things in Jiu Jitsu that it's good if you have it, it's good if you have speed, flexibility, strength, but it's not something that should be very necessary. And turtle guard is something that anybody can do. Anybody can get in a fetal type of position like this, but just having these small body movements is key where I can start to move around, change the angle, start to sit through, okay? So when we start to combine all these body movements together and you can kind of get like a free flow happening, it should look something like this, where we can roll over our shoulder. I can grab your roll, back and forth. I can pretend I'm internal moving away from my opponent, sitting back here. And here I can roll over the shoulder again. Here, I sit back here. I roll over the other shoulder. I'm moving away on my knees here. I sit back here. I do a sideways shoulder roll to the other side. I go back to turtle from there. I grab your roll here. I sit back. I roll back to turtle here. See. You can freestyle it. Freestyle it, be creative. Try to get used to moving your body around. But the more that you can move yourself, the more it's gonna benefit you in the long run, and the less that you'll find that you need to move him. A lot of times, Jiu Jitsu is about moving your own body as much as, about, as it is about moving him. So try to master these solo movements, and you'll find that your, your turtle game is gonna get a lot better. Your defense is gonna get a lot more sound. It's just gonna make you a better round. One way that you might find yourself in turtle is if I'm playing guard and my partner decides to leg drag me, like so. So rather than getting stuck and pinned into side control, I can keep turning away, go to my knees, and now I'm in the turtle position. Usually from here, my partner is going to connect to me hip to hip, like so. So just basic body positioning. How do I want to set myself up when I'm in turtle and my partner is on top of me? I want to keep my elbows fairly close to my knees here. And I'm only lift, lifting my head up so you can hear me and uh, see what I'm doing. Normally, I'm always gonna keep my head on the floor here. Nothing good comes from lifting your head because she's gonna start to look to find a collar grip and now I'm gonna get choked. So basic positioning, we have our head on the floor, my hands and my wrists protect my neck. If Morgan's trying to take a grip, I'm blocking with my hand here. I'm not so much worried about if she gets a grip underneath my arm, still not ideal, but this is the less dangerous grip. If she grabs over top of my shoulder, now I'm in immediate danger. So I'm um, head on the floor. My elbows are in tight to my knees. It can be outside my knees, but I'm just protecting this elbow knee space. And if she's trying to get grips or attack me, I'm just head on the floor, trusting in my base here. I'm just kind of trying to block this hand or go between there and just block in my, el uh, my knees to my elbows. If she goes for grips here, or goes to get a seatbelt, we're not look looking to let that happen. So I'm kind of shrugging my shoulders here to prevent that seatbelt from happening. If she's, if she's able to get her hand in and I feel like the seatbelt's coming, I grab the wrist and I try to punch this away. So if she's trying to attack turtle from here, you just gotta be comfortable staying tight and protecting your neck here. If she gets a grip on the collar, I gotta stop everything that I'm doing and try to strip that off and then go back to turtle position. 
So once more the whole way through. As I'm getting leg dragged here, I know I gotta go to turtle, so I'm already thinking stay tight here. And now I'm blocking here. Another really common thing that will happen is your partner will look to try to break you down to a hip. So when I'm here, my partner will look to grab my belt or my hip and then pull me down like this, looking to get me into side control or open up a chance to get the back. If they do that one to us, we gotta really protect that elbow knee space. So as Morgan knocks me down here, my hips hit the floor, but I keep my elbow tight to my knee. So as I go back to where I was and she tries to throw a hook in, it's not gonna be there. A lot of times you'll see people get knocked over. They go to get back up and they leave a big gap here where their elbow and their knee is. Now it's easy for her to shoot that hook in. And now I'm getting my back ticket. So if they do manage to knock you over and it will happen, just know that this elbow knee space is what's important to protect. So I just get up kind of with my body crunched up like so, I'm reaching for the mat and now I'm protecting myself again. So this is just basic turtle positioning one-on-one. One thing you can use pretty effectively from turtle is just a sit through, just trying to quickly get back to guard. A lot of times in turtle, people will try to roll your opponent over. That can work, but this is kind of nice and simple and it's really effective. If I'm stuck in turtle like so, head on the floor, I'm gonna look to grab a hold of the fabric here on my partner's pants here. You don't need to be too picky with it. Just try to kind of grab at the shin. And now I'm gonna shoot my right knee through, almost try to connect it to Morgan's foot. So as I'm here, I lift this leg up and I shoot through. Even if she tries to keep the weight onto me, it should be fairly easy for me to get back into a bear situation. I'm in turtle. My partner's got me under pressure. I'm getting attacked. First things first, I'm trying to stay safe. Good defense. Keep my elbows in tight to my knees. If she's trying to go for a grip, trying to attack me, I'm just defending here until I can get this grip on the pant leg here. And now, this grip is important because if I just try to do the sit through without the grip, she might run around to my back here. Now I'm in trouble. So that grip is what prevents them from being able to, to get the jump on you and get around you. So as I'm here, I take the grip on the pants as I go to sit through, my hands up for uh, for support. If she tries to go to run around my legs now, I can just turn and face her. And now I'm gonna look to play some type of guard. Turtles are really a uh, position you really have to feel it out here. You kind of have to feel where their weight is going. If they're all the way over top of you, this may not be the time to do it. But if you kind of feel like their weight is kind of just sitting back a little bit, or maybe not crushing you, now's the time to get the pant leg. And it's like I'm trying to kind of almost go into a half circle into my right as my right knee comes through. And now I can walk up back into gear. Probably the most popular turtle attack is the steamroller. So how do we get there? Sometimes side control, you're gonna end up in turtle. Why? Because it's sometimes just easier to roll away and kind of run away from the situation. Normally classic traditional jiu-jitsu, they teach you not to roll away, to try to get your guard back in some fashion like this. But it can't, it doesn't always work. Sometimes you need a backup. Sometimes you can go to turtle and then regard. So in this situation, if she has my arm trapped, this is a problem. So I gotta use my bridge, bump, get a forearm in, and now I can bridge the other way and get my hand inside. Now I'm free to start to turn. But Morgan's not gonna give me this for free. She's gonna stay connected to me. And we're gonna get to turtle from here. Now, in some people's eyes, this is better for her than side control. But we're gonna look to take advantage of this arm across our waist, grabbing the sleeve. And now I do a little punch like this so I can trap the elbow. If I don't have the elbow trapped and I just have the wrist, this move isn't gonna work nearly as effective as when I punch and trap the elbow. And now I'm gonna start to move my knees and my hips away from Morgan's body. And now I start to roll over my right shoulder, just kind of brushing her by with my left arm. And now I'm gonna end up So she's side control on me, I end up side control on her. So I'm stuck here. I'm not gonna be able to roll if she has this arm trap. It's not gonna work. So take the time to bridge, get your first frame in, bump again. Once I get hands to the inside, now I can start to turn away, still protecting my neck. I don't want her to get a choke grip, but as long as I can get access to this hand, now I trap it. 
If I were just to roll from this position, she's gonna feel like a ton of bricks. Now she's all of her weight's on top of me. It's because I have to make space between my hips and her hips for her to fall into. Watch the lower body on this one. See how I'm walking away? It doesn't seem like much, but it changes everything. As I take her over, it becomes very easy. And even on an opponent that is bigger than you, you should still be able to do this as long as you walk away on your knees. The so one last time. I'm stuck, I just got my guard pass. I'm gonna roll away, give her the bait. I'm protecting my neck with my left hand, rolling away to turtle. So now we're stuck. I'm stuck in this position. I get access to the sleeve and I punch here, trapping this elbow nice and tight. I start to walk my legs away, head still on the floor. And now I'm gonna roll, putting my right shoulder on the mat. She's gonna go over my upper back and then I look to take side control from there. That's the steamroller from Turtle. A couple things that can happen with that steamroller is crucifix. Crucifix is, crucifix is really close to Turtle for the attacker. So the Morgan situation, if she grabs a hold of my waist and I hit the steamroller, I'm set up, things are going great. She could get a step ahead of me if she anticipates this coming and look to lock up my left arm as I roll through here. I find that I land a crucifix. Just one in. So this is not good. I thought I did something good offensively, but now I'm stuck here like so. How do I get out of the crucifix if I did the steamroller and ended up here? You gotta think about it. You're gonna do two escapes in one. First, I need to escape this arm. So I'm gonna use my legs, walk my feet, and look to trap Morgan's legs in a half guard. Just trying to trap her ankle. And now it's gonna make it easier for me to swim this hand inside and escape the legs. Now I turn towards the head and I lift this elbow to escape that more. And then I can start to get up on top. Okay. Here, I trap, I roll, but Morgan was able to catch me. I'm stuck in the crucifix. Here. A lot of people, when they get in this situation, they'll just look to drive their weight up onto their partner, but that's not an escape. It kind of just makes them uncomfortable. And if, if she's really locked on real tight here, this can be a real pain. So use your legs here. I don't just reach from here to catch the foot. I walk my feet here, kind of bringing my right arm in close to my body. And now I trap the legs, okay? Doesn't seem like a great position, but if Morgan is trying to attack me from here, it's gonna be tough because she needs her, her legs to get something going. And now I just circle my right hand inside here. Now, a big mistake people make from here in this Kimura is they'll just look to sit up here. If I sit up, Morgan still has a lot of torque with the Kimura that she can bring me back down. So what I do is I walk my feet towards her head, try to get my thumb inside her elbow, and now I lift. If she tries to stay locked up real tight with the Kimura from here, I can just keep walking, keep walking, and take my arm out. <laughs> and then I'm up on top. So again, say we already did the, the roll through with the steamroller. My partner jumped ahead of me. They landed in crucifix here. Don't panic. Stay here. Look to walk your legs towards their feet and look to trap here. It may take a couple times, some fishing around with the legs. And now I'm gonna start to circle this hand inside, back on the mat, and now hand on the elbow. Don't sit up. That's dangerous when you're in the Gamora. Hand on the floor, walking the feet away, and now punch free. And now I'm gonna look to get up and then attack myself. You also might get locked in crucifix just when you're in turtle right off the bat. They might step over your wrist here like so. Now I got to be careful if Morgan's able to bring her heel back to her butt and put her knee on the ground. Now I'm already locked in a crucifix even though I'm still in turtle. So best case scenario would for, for me to be able to try to roll through from here and escape a regular crucifix. But if she just goes back a step, like so, I gotta think about this not as her crucifix, as my single leg. So as she steps in front of my wrist and I see that happening, I look to grab a hold of this leg here. Seems almost kind of counterintuitive, like I'm, I feel like I'm a little bit at risk, but if Morgan goes to attack me from here, she's just not really in the correct body position to do it. And I just look to keep my head glued to her and kind of end up on top. So the key things that are important here is that as soon as they step over, now I'm taking this leg here. Don't wait for them to pull the leg back here. Now this is a different situation. I'm not gonna be able to get my arm free. 
but all I do is hug the ankle and I'm driving in to the shin. If she tries to keep her base and stay on top, it's not easy because I have a hold of this leg and I'm just looking to control both hips and keep my head kind of in the center of her body. People will often go for this a lot because they want that crucifix. It locks up both arms. So I'm staying here, hugging that ankle here. If she tries to go for a choke, tries to go for my back, tries to do anything, I just stay on this leg. This is now my single leg, not her crucifix. And then I can look to basically just wrestle up to try to get on top. Another good turtle counter is the leg trap. And this is one I don't see used very often, but it's really effective. It's similar to the dog fight. You guys probably know what the dog fight is in half bear. So how we do this one is, it's really more the lower body. I'll turn after I show this one. But what I'm looking to do is I'm taking advantage of when my partner's knee is on the floor. Why would they put their knee on the floor? Sometimes they're just lazy and they're just looking to just kind of regain some energy. If their knee's off the floor, it means they're driving more weight into your hip, right? This is worse for me, better for them, but it takes a little more energy on Morgan's part to, to just keep doing that. So sometimes you'll just find, they'll just put their knee on the floor. So in that situation, I'm just gonna take a couple steps back on my knees, and then I'm gonna look to step over Morgan's ankle from here. Now I look to get that other foot, and I'm kind of just sagging my weight into it. It knocks her back here, and as I lay on top of her hips, it's gonna be really tough for her to recover on offense. And I just look to keep climbing up the body, eventually looking to control the hip. That's how we wanna end up with all guard passes or dominant positions. So again, here in this time with 180, so you guys can see the lower body fight. But I'm like so, stuck in turtle. Her knee's on the floor, so I just take a couple steps back and step over here like this. Now that puts that twist into her knee. I grab a hold of this ankle. If I don't have this ankle, she could just step out on the foot here. But once I get this ankle, I'm able to put her down and get up on top. So, like I said, it's one people don't usually think of, but it's really effective. They can't take their leg out once you trap. So again, here, walk back. If I just try to reach from here, my leg's not long enough. I got short legs, so I got to step back, and now it's easy. Here. And now I look to get this ankle here. If she tries to crucifix me or do anything from here, good luck. I have both of her legs, and now I'm going to be able just to end up on top. So. This is also great because it's a very low risk move. You don't lose anything or put yourself in a bad position if you don't get it. So if I'm stuck here and I'm reaching for it and I miss it, no big deal. I'll just try for something else. I'll try to look for the steamroll or a sit back to go here. You gotta have different options to get out of the situation. But one more time with the leg trap, we're here. I notice the knees on the floor. So immediately I walk back just two or three steps, step over here. And now I look to get this far ankle and I'm driving my weight into her and also kind of back to my right a little bit to drop her down here. And then I'm looking to climb up the body and control the hip. Okay, so now it's time to combine a couple of these movements. I'm sure as you know, if you just have one move, one attack, People are gonna figure you out. You need different ways to solve these problems. So what I like to do is combine the leg trap and the steamroller. So why, why would I do one versus the other? Well, if her knee's on the floor, perfect time to go into the leg trap. If her knee's off the floor, good time to try to attempt the steamroller. But as you go for one, they're likely gonna resist. So say I walk the steamroller, Morgan starts to resist. She's gonna have to put her weight the other way. Very often they'll do that by putting the knees on the floor. So I go like I want the steamroller, I feel the resistance, and now I move into her and step over that knee. And now I have to get the other leg and sink my weight into it. Also, what would be possible is the reverse of this situation, where maybe I'm looking for the knee trap, but Morgan lifts her foot off the floor here. Now I can look to hit the steamroller. So, if you're able to use these moves in combination with each other, you'll get at a turtle a lot more than you used to. So again, here, I start out looking for one, I go for the other. 
If I want the leg trap because I see the knee on the floor and I go to reach, she moves the leg away. Here, now I look for that sleep. Remember, we punch, so we're trapping the elbow. Move the knees away, and I'm rolling over. Here, and I'm turning my hips to face my opponent as quickly as I can. If I go for the steamroller first, and that doesn't work because she puts her weight back, then we move over the leg, stepping over, and I'm just looking to get this prior knee. Don't go for the wrist. If I go for the wrist, she can just punch this grip off, and now she's gonna look to take a collar grip, and I'm gonna be in danger. So I grab for the far leg. Even if she takes a collar grip at this point here, it's not gonna matter, because I can still knock her down. I have more control over her than she does over me. So again, here, like I said, you really have to kind of feel it out in this situation. Here, right now, I notice her knees off the floor. That means I want to try the steamroller. I go for it, she resists. That means I got to go leg trap. She manages to get the leg out here. I got to go back to the steamroller, okay? Here's a reversal you're going to use from defensive turtle. This was one that might come up, especially if you're going against someone that has a bit of a weight advantage over you. But I've shown you the steamroller which is when we control our opponent's sleeve, we roll him over to the other side. But this is an opportunity that comes up. If he holds back, you aren't able to roll him, we're gonna start to come out the back door and I'm gonna end up attacking him from turtle. So he's forced me to turtle, however we land here. Remember the steamroller is when we trap the elbow and I roll Matt over my left shoulder. But some big guys, their, their base is gonna be too strong you're not gonna be able to take them. And they're just gonna kind of hunker down and stay sturdy. So when I feel this and I don't feel like I can go for the steamroller, I'm gonna start to move my head in towards Matt and my legs away from him. And I'm starting to slip my head out the back door. Now I look for a grip on this hip and now I'm attacking him from turtle. So you're just kind of coming out the back door and now I'm gonna start to set up an attack of my own. Block choke, back take, something of that nature. So, Again, we have to feel where our opponent's weight is. I want the steamroller and I really sell it like I'm trying to go for it, but I feel like it's not there. He's got too much weight in the opposite direction. So I'm not just able to pull my head out from here. I have to change the angle of my body. I'm walking on my knees. Look at my knees. I'm almost doing a 180. Sometimes I can almost have a counter shoulder lock on Matt, but a lot of times he's not gonna like this. He's gonna fight to extend his arm and I'm just gonna take the opportunity to attack him from turtle. So we've seen the steamroller, the leg trap, when I'm able to step over Matt's knee, but maybe that's not working. I go for the steamroller. He's got too much weight in the opposite direction. So we start to turn and now pop our head at the back, still staying very close to him and ending up where I'm attacking like so. And I'm not gonna give him the chance to go for the steamroller and, and give him that arm. I'm just gonna keep it on the outside. I can wax the turtle to the other side, jump around. I can look to do an, do an attack on my own. This is also very useful if he's able to lock up a Kimura on my far arm here. This is not good. This is very dangerous. I don't want to expose my elbow too much because he's going to really be able to control my body. So if he is able to lock me up here, I want to pull this elbow in tight. It gives him a little less purchase with that Kimura. And now I'm keeping my elbow tight to my body. I'm going to hit the same escape as the, the counter to the steamroller where I start to walk, pop my head out to the other side. Now again, I feel like I have a Kimura on him more than he has on me. He's not gonna like that and he's gonna look to take his arm out and that gives us the chance to attack turtle again. So this coming out the back door is actually quite useful when you feel like you don't have options to roll him over or he's locked onto the Kimura like this. If I leave my elbow pointed out away from me, this is Matt's Kimura. He's going to pull me back. He's going to be in control. But if I quickly realize, uh-oh, I'm in a Kimura, I pull this elbow tight to my body. Now he can't really pull me around like he would have potentially been able to. And now I'm not done. I got to keep my head on the floor and change the angle. Once my head is out here, this isn't his Kimura. It's more my Kimura. And now I'm the one attacking turn. So just kind of walking away from him on your knees is gonna be very valuable. One last time, I'm defending. He was able to get the Kimura attack on my far arm here like this. If I just try to punch this hand away and, and resist, 
you're gonna waste more energy than you want. So use your body, move away, use your head, duck it out the other side, and now drop your shoulder. So it makes him wanna let go, and now I'm the one attacking him rather than him attacking me. So that's our escape where we come out the back door, either with the steamroller or if he locks the door. This one's the Grammy roll. What's the Grammy roll? I don't even know who created this move, but it's a, a wrestling style move. And Jiu-Jitsu guys have kind of mastered it. It can sometimes save you from a takedown or save you from getting scored on. But basically the idea is that I'm here, I'm gonna tuck my right arm between my legs and I'm actually gonna roll across my shoulders looking to throw my legs at Morgan so I can end up back into a guard position. And I find the time to do this versus the steamroller or the leg trap is if my partner kind of takes their weight off of me just a little bit. If they're crushing me with their hips, it may not be the time to do this, but if they're kind of just kind of settled onto me, now I feel like I have a little bit of wiggle room that I can put this arm between my legs here and I'm rolling. As soon as my shoulder hits the floor, it's like I'm trying to throw my hips and my butt in the morning's face. Take that. <laughs> so. I'm here, I'm stuck here in the turtle. Roll over the shoulder that's closest to them. If I try to roll over this shoulder, that's the one I need for the steamroller. I would need to trap the arm. But instead I'm rolling over this way here. I'm looking towards her and this like comes around here. And that one replaces the guard. Sometimes you can even see submissions happen from this where if the person's a little too over aggressive, as I roll, I might be able to get a hold of the sleeve. And now I can end up with her in a triangle situation here, which would be pretty bad if you're on top of turtle. So just be mindful that when I'm stuck here from turtle, as long as they don't have their hands connected, I'm looking to always block that seatbelt from coming in. I roll over the near shoulder, looking away to protect my neck. And now I'm trying to throw my hips right at it here. Maybe I'll land in triangle, maybe I'll land in closed guard. Either way, I'm able to get out of here. So, you can see the grand new roll come up from different situations. I know guys like Gary Tonin will use it when they're standing in a body lock to try to roll out of takedowns. That can look pretty cool. But, really, more than anything, you want to master the grand new roll from here. And this isn't one you're going to see probably on Instagram. It honestly kind of stresses me out sometimes when I see the flashy moves on Instagram, that's not really what we should be practicing. You, everyone really needs to focus a lot more on defense. And this is one that it may not look amazing, but it's gonna save you a lot more than a flying armbar or a flying triangle. So one last time with the granny roll. I'm stuck, I'm protecting myself, I'm blocking the wrist, I'm not allowing the seatbelt to come in. My head's on the floor, I roll over the right shoulder and I take that left leg nice and wide looking to get inside the closed guard. Don't get too greedy looking for submissions. Try to think defense first, and then I can start to set up my attacks. One thing that you can look to take advantage of when you're in turtle is if, you're a par if, if your partner goes behind you and they leave a leg in between the middle of your legs. Normally, when Morgan is attacking a turtle, she wants both of her legs on the same side. This allows her to create a lot more pressure pushing her hip into my hip. But sometimes people, sometimes you're just, just about taking advantage of mistakes. Sometimes they're gonna stay behind you, but if you notice that their knee is in between your legs, I have a really good opportunity to roll through into a leg attack. So what I'm gonna do for this situation is with my left arm, I'm gonna reach between my legs here. And now I'm gonna look to roll over my left shoulder here. As I roll, I'm just gonna kick my legs and I land perfectly with the knee bar in place. If the knee bar is not legal, just use it for a sweep, and then I'll look to control the head and pass the guard. It's very dangerous in Morgan's situation to leave that leg in between my legs. If she's off to the side, there's no threat of me rolling for the knee bar. But if she circles a little bit too far here, now I can reach, it's my inside arm, not the outside arm. I don't really, I'm not really able to control the leg effectively that way. So I wanna grab with my left hand over my left shoulder and now I'm gonna roll forward, looking to land onto my right side. Here, I let the momentum carry me over, and now I can get onto the knee bar. 
This is one that I use a lot. Anytime I notice the person behind me. And again, it's fairly low risk. If I'm not able to successfully get the knee bar, or I roll through and I just mess up here, not the end of the world. It's just kind of a scramble situation, right? But if you want the knee bar, just lock onto the leg. Here, grab with the left hand, try to grab right behind the knee, grab the hamstring. Here, and now left shoulder, I roll, and she's gonna be forced to go with me. Now I land in a perfect position to extend the leg, or if that's not legal, I'm in a reverse half guard, and I'll look to pass from there. Okay, this is a clock choke defense. Clock choke is one of my favorite submission attacks to use from Turtle, and really from all Jiu-Jitsu. Seymour is like an old school submission, but it works really great. And the way that it works is if my partner's a Turtle, and this is why you gotta watch out for these grips that are coming over the shoulder here. I can get a nice collar grip, it doesn't have to be super deep, just thumb in. My other hand reaches for the other collar here, and now I look to put my forehead on the floor, and I use my hips to kind of slide down Morgan's back, and I walk into a circle. That's why they call it a clock jump. And if your partner goes for this on you, you better be careful. And you need to know the correct defense to use. You can use the steamroller, but it's really important to take a defensive grip on their knees. So what I want you to do is if you feel your partner setting up for the clock choke, here, like so, it's really important that I get a grip on the pants. Here, why do I need a grip on the pants? Because for Morgan to finish the clock choke, she has to be able to drop her hip on the back of my neck here. If I didn't have this grip, she could start to drop her hip, the choke's getting tighter and tighter, I'm gonna have to tap. So the grip on the pants takes some of the gas off the choke. You're gonna need that. And for her to finish the clock choke, she's bringing her weight up over your upper back, which that's gonna lead you to the steamroller. So what we do is we're here, she locks up the clock choke here. I grab the pant leg. Either pant leg will work. I'll just grab a hold of it. Sometimes the near one can be better. Sometimes the far one's better, but don't waste too much time. Just get a grip on the fabric. And now as she goes to finish that clock choke, she's not gonna be able to slide her hips down my, my back like she needs to. And this sets me up to be able to roll because she's over my upper back. You gotta be careful because she's still gonna look to try to put the choke on from here. So I lift my hips up and onto her. And now I can start to turn and walk in. So our clock joke defense is grabbing the pants and hitting that steamroller. So I'm here, she starts to get the grip on my collar. Right away, I'm going for that pant leg here. Because now, even if she's all in and she's 100% trying to finish that clock choke, this is gonna save me. And now, see the position of her body? She's mostly up over my upper back. So I just want to trap that arm and roll her over. I'm not at a danger yet. Look at the position that I'm in. I don't want to lay, lay with my back on the floor because she can still get quite a bit of pressure. So I lift my hips up onto her. And I'm trying to bring my arm over to the other side until I can get a side control pin happen. So one last time. This could just save you just the grip, even if you don't do the roll. Maybe she goes to hit the clock choke and she's trying, she's trying, she's walking in the circle and I'm just holding her off, right? But eventually you're gonna wanna Hit that roll through. And now hips come up off the floor. And I'm starting to turn. And now I'm settled in to side control. So clock choke defense. Okay, let's talk about standing up and turtle. Now, this is something I use time to time, but I find it's more of a no gi technique. Why? Because when you wear the gi, you have to know that you're basically covered in handles. Your partner can grab any part of the gi and pull you down. So let me show you if this technique does go well for you. Basically, what I'm looking to do, step up on my outside foot here, and I'm using the, the floor for support to drive myself up, looking to step up on this foot. Now, if my partner knows anything, they're gonna look to connect their hands together and keep a body lock here because she wants to stay on the offensive. So I have to attack the wrists. I go thumbs inside, and I'm gonna start to walk my feet away using my hips to break that lock, and now I can look to shoot it for a takedown, try to do something offensive. So again, I'm stuck in turtle here. I'm gonna step up with the outside leg, 
And now I'm almost like I'm doing a push up here. And now I start to lift my upper body, immediately bringing my hands into the wrists and walking the feet away until I can break. Now I can make it look to hit an arm drag, go to a bottle off on my own. Why I don't love this particular technique, especially with the gi, like I said, you're covered in handles. So if Morgan is in a turtle situation and she goes to step up here, it's just too easy for me to grab a hold of the gi, make space, and bring her hips to the floor. Now I'm gonna look to log a seat belt. One tricky thing they might try to do, step up on the near leg here. You might find it difficult to break them down here. All I gotta do is switch around her to the other side, and now it's gonna be easy. Now I let the lock down seat belt, and I can start to attack the collars from there. So this definitely can work standing up from turtle, but you gotta be really careful. And it's my preference to do that more no gi, where they're not able to have so much grip and so much leverage over you. And again, just to show you, if she, if she does stand up on that foot here, immediately I gotta think, break her down to a hip to this weak side, like so. She goes to go back, I'm gonna look to shoot the hook in and try to work with the back. Something that we'll cover in the offense. But again, from turtle, if she steps up on this one, don't waste time trying to break her down to this side. She's got her base is too strong. So now I just switch around to the other side and now bring the hips to the floor and now I can look to attack from there. He goes to step up here. I don't waste time here. I switch around to the other side here. And now it's easy to bring the hips to the floor, lock the seat belt, I can go right into the clock choke, different things like that. Let's talk a little bit about front headlock defense. Now, this can be a whole can of worms that you don't want to open sometimes when you shoot in a double leg. Whatever happens, you ended up in this front headlock position. This is not one that you want to spend a long amount of time in. So there's a couple things we can do to stay safe. So as Matt traps me in the front headlock, I don't really want my elbows on the floor and I don't want him opening my elbows. Anytime he opens my elbows, I'm weak. When my elbows are in close to my body, I'm strong. So what I do here is I go up onto my hands and my arm that's trapped inside the front headlock, I wanna cock my elbow back and point my thumb at Matt, just my thumb. Why? Because this makes my arm strong here. If Matt tries to open my elbow up from here, I'm gonna be quite sturdy. But if my, my hand is pointed at him, my thumb's pointed away, look how easy it is for him to open my elbow here like so. Now he's gonna get into anacondas, Darces, things of that nature. So what I do is I point my thumb at him and the cap of my elbow is pointed away from him. So now as he tries to open my elbow, he doesn't have the same play with it. And now I step up on my foot here. Even though he's holding me tight, I'm gonna start to circle out this way and I push on that tricep. I picture like I'm trying to push my head out towards the opposite armpit. So even if he's held on fairly tight here, as I start to circle, my head will come out and now I end up attacking turtle on him. So this might be one that you need to repeat a couple times. If the guy's on nice and tight, it might take a few reps, but don't get discouraged. Keep your thumb pointed at him. Keep your arm strong. Now I step up. I'm circling. I'm using an angle to get out of here and pop my head out. Now I would immediately look to go on the attack with maybe either a clock choke, maybe look to lock up a Kimura. The choice is yours. But if I just hang out in this front headlock and I just try to kind of stay here, things can get real dangerous real quick. So just take the time to post your hands, point that thumb up. Even if I just hang out here, I'm much more comfortable and I feel less in danger here than I do here. Here, I feel like he's one move away from being able to threaten the submission. Here, I feel a little bit sturdier. And now I am actually starting to escape, get my head up to the other side. And now I'm in a position where I can attack him. So that's our first front headlock escape. Okay, here's a front headlock escape. Maybe we can't pop our head out the other side like we want to and end up on the offensive. Sometimes there's gonna be times in jiu-jitsu where you're forced to go back on the defensive. Even though you might not want to, it's sometimes the smarter option. So 
in this situation. Matt's on the front headlock. And I don't feel like the last escape is gonna work where I'm able to push my head out. Sometimes guys are just real strong on the front headlock. You're gonna wanna recover guard rather than try to reverse them. So what I wanna do in this situation, the arm that, I, that Matt has trapped, I actually try to, try, I'm gonna try to use to find my underhook. So what does that mean? As I'm here, I can still move around on my knees a little bit. So I'm gonna start to move to my right and I try to take my arm to the outside here like this. Now, I gotta be careful of my neck because Matt does have a hold of my head here. But what I'm looking to do, maintain a grip here and start to move out to the side, step over Matt's leg, and now I force the half grip. See how he had to post his hand on the floor? Because his base is a little bit compromised and he's gonna wanna recover. So now I can start to go up to my knees and you can go through any of the half guard sweeps that we learned in the half guard series. But important things to think, think about here, is not letting the shoulder get too crunched into your neck, keeping wide shoulders here like this. Now, I'm basically sitting to half guard. I'm trying to find my underhook here as I shoot in here. Now, he does have a guillotine threat here, but it's arm in, which to me is usually a little bit harder to finish. And his base is compromised, so I have a good half guard. As I start to drive into him, he's gonna have to let go to recover his base. And now I'm in a good position to run him down. Now, I would score two points for a sweep rather than just being stuck in front headlock. So, this could be a good one to use. I'm stuck. I've been in the front headlock for a few seconds. I can feel my energy draining. I want to start to find the, find the half guard. It doesn't really work as effectively if I try to half guard the other side because if I underhook with this arm, I feel like I'm getting choked more. So, you'll know right away if you're doing it to the wrong side. The arm that he has trapped, that's the arm you want the underhook on the natural side, which is gonna to be to my right here. Even if I can't get a high underhook, no problem. I'll take the leg and take a low underhook on his leg. Here like this. We can still do our same half guard series from here. Come out, attack the back, set up the dog fight, go through the triple attack series. But as long, if I'm able to get back to a guard position, I'm at least gonna be able to Take a couple deep breaths, clear my head, think about where I want to go from there, rather than if, if I'm just pinned in the front headlock and stuck. You're not going to be able to think very clearly. You're going to be under a lot of pressure. You're probably going to get submitted, your back taken, mounted, something like that. So one last time, as we're just trying to recover guard from the front headlock, we're nice and wide here like this. I find my underhook as I'm coming around to the side and taking my head out of that guillotine he posts the hand, I come up to the dog fight, and now I can look to either knee tap him down or go through another half guard sweep. So that's our front headlock, just back to a basic half guard recovery.